you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Peace. Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available in 2021, the album. <laughs> yeah, AF. Rock on, gold dust woman! Beast! Oh my god, I'm losing my voice. Yesterday and today, I have woken up and I'm like, what is going on? It's either horrible allergies, but we've already had like our first frost in Indianapolis, or I've, I've come down with a cold. I don't know. But my nose is running and my like throat is like sore. Do you guys hear this? I'm like, what is going Is it me staying up so late? listening to <laughs> Campers and Criminals, my newest cozy mysteries. Anyway, today we have lots of dramas to talk about, okay? We have all kinds of dramas of the world to talk about over here. We're gonna get right into it in just a second. Um, but I also wanted to tell you, do you guys know what today is? It's Rex Manning Day. No, it's not, <laughs> do you guys know what Rex Manning Day is? If you know what Rex Manning Day is, put it in the comment section below. Today is Starbucks holiday, woo! I'm winded just from that intro. Anyway, <laughs> now I know why you guys are. Um, it is Starbucks holiday launch or drink launch day today, okay? Which means that this is the day that they launch their two new drinks. Like, Starbucks never comes up with that many exciting new drinks anymore, but I'm going to go over there today and I'm going to try one of the drinks out. And then I got to go to another Starbucks where they have all the cups, okay? Because they come out with their holiday cups today. And if you're a Starbucks cup connoisseur like me and you collect them, well, then you have to have the holiday cup. So you have to go to one store and then another because you can only buy two cups at each store. It, they just make it so difficult for us collectors these days, don't they? But I do have to tell you something. Okay, my husband's so nice. Now, y'all know I love fashion. Okay, I do, I do. I love fashions of the world so much. I love a fashion bug. I love fashion bug. And I love a fashion barn. I love fashions. I, I just love fashion so much. I'm so into the fashions, you know, couture. So anyway, my husband the other day, he bought this hat for his good Judy, okay, for her birthday. And then he bought himself one. Well, they ended up sending a third one, right? Because the timing of it was wrong. So they're like, here, we're gonna send you a third one. And he didn't have anybody to give it to. So he said, if you would like this hat, you can have it. And I was like, I saw it sitting on the table over there. When he wore it, it looked adorable, right? And my husband always looks good and everything. So I was like, oh, I think that hat's real cute. And I love, you know, the yank. <laughs> don't look at the hair. We don't need to look at the hair today. So I was like, well, y'all know I love fashions, <laughs> okay? So I love this uh, fleece and leather uh, Yankees hat because I love fashion so much. Hi, <laughs> couture. But anyway... So, I do think this is going to be my new hat, okay, for videos. <laughs> don't you think it's so good? I don't. Anyway, <laughs> look at this hat. What, like, seriously? I was so excited when he was like, you can have it if you want. I was like, oh my god, I'm going to look so good in that hat. This hat looks foolish on me, okay? This is not fashions! <laughs> <laughs> James Charles would, like, wear that hat in a picture, and he'd be like this. He'd be like, Here would be the picture. He'd be like this. <laughs> Fashion couture. <laughs> that would be James Charles in a good bucket hat. <laughs> I wonder how many people, after he posted that picture of himself in a bucket hat, like that was a new concept. Like people weren't doing bucket hats in 1988. How many people went out and bought a Gucci bucket hat? Anyway, anyway, there's a little bit of shade for the day. Let's talk about Tati Westbrook and Jaclyn Hill. So Tati Westbrook has come out. And she has stated that um, Tati Beauty is closing down by sisters. She's gone. She's closing up shop. They're not selling pallets anymore. That's the first thing we're going to talk about. And then we're going to talk about Jaclyn Hill. Jaclyn's uh, new jewelry uh, site called, she calls it a business. You know, everybody that opens a website now, we call it a business. We call it like, I'm the CEO of a website. <laughs> How many employees do you have? Well... I mean, it's different from Jacqueline. I mean, she's got a bunch of people working for her in a warehouse and stuff like that. But, I mean, seriously, it's like, I'm a CEO of how many people? Well, I have a blog. So, I'm the CEO of one, basically. But anyway, um, so Jacqueline Hill was really excited about launching her jewelry line today, which is called Jacqueline Roxanne. I 
actually looked at the price point for a lot of this jewelry because she's got hoops over there that are like $60 and other hoops that are like $40 and stuff. And I was like, is this expensive? Like, I don't know. And I did price point comparisons online of places like Macy's, Kohl's, other jewelry stores. Um, I mean, and that's just like kind of like run-of-the-mill middle, you know, uh, shopping, I think, not like upscale jewelry stores. And I have to say, like, her prices are really fair and comparable to what is out there. So anyway, she was really, really excited today on her Instagram story. She um, posted all about her launch happening. She posted all about, uh, you know, like her getting ready and her hair and her makeup getting ready and all that kind of stuff. She was so, so, so excited about it. Okay. Well, I know, I know. We already knew this was going to happen. I don't know how Jaclyn Hill didn't know it was going to happen, but we all knew, right? So, the site crashed, okay? So, here, let me, uh, Jaclyn put up an announcement on her Instagram story. Here, let me play it for you right here. Okay, you guys, so we are not sold out, but we are having technical difficulties on the website, and it's super, super, super frustrating for me because we've troubleshooted this for two months straight, and we thought we were 100% good to go. We were not expecting the amount of traffic that we do currently have on the site, so because of that, there are issues with the shopping cart. Like, when you go to add it, it's saying that there's an error. We, trust me, I'm keeping myself together right now. I am freaking out. I'm so angry because... <laughs> because so anyways we are working our ass off right now my entire team is back there trying to get this up frantically as fast as possible for you i just want to say i am so sorry but we are working to get everything up and going so i appreciate your patience guys So that's what Jacqueline had to say. Now, at the end of the little video, she has a statement that she puts out and it says, I am so effing sorry, you guys. I can't believe this is happening. Currently on the phone with IT support since this is an issue with the server. There are currently over 20 million requests on imanit.com and the server can't support it. I'll update you the second we solve the issue. I'm so sorry. Okay, so here's some questions I have, first of all. And I'm not saying that Jacqueline's lying and I'm not saying that she's not lying, okay? Part of the problem with this is uh, when you talk about people that are having like technical issues like this, for example, Jeffree Star on almost every single launch that he has, there are technical issues, okay? And then the technical issues lead to we sold out is what it is. Jacqueline Hill is another person that with almost every single launch going all the way back to like Becca and things like that, there's always a technical issue. There always, always, always is a technical issue, okay? Or we didn't order enough, or we didn't expect this, or whatever. Well, quite frankly, you're CEO of a company, that's your job, okay? That's your job to plan out how many things you need. And this is where when people say to me things like, how could they possibly know? They didn't know how many people. Well, when Jacqueline throws out the number that there are, what did she just say in this statement? 20 million requests on, um, hold on a second. 20, over 20 million requests on the site. There are currently over 20 million requests on imanit.com and the server can't support it. That means that I'm assuming, okay? It doesn't necessarily mean that there are 20 million people on there at the same time because if there are 20 million people on Jaclyn Hill's website at the same time, when she can't even pull that many people on a video over the course of a week, I'm not buying it, okay? I am not buying that there are 20 million people on her website at the same time. So I have to believe that what Jacqueline means by that is that there are several requests like for an earring is a request, okay? Or for a necklace is a request. I don't know what that means, request, number one. Number two, when she says she's on the phone with technical support for the server, what's interesting to me, okay, <clears throat> when you have had multiple, multiple issues like this, over the course of several launches, over the course of several years, right? If you were a good CEO that was really concerned about your business, <clears throat> the day that you are having a launch, if you were concerned about this, right, that there would be a possibility of this, because it's always them, like, hanging around a computer, and it's like, launch, push button, like, I don't know, they make it look like it's just like launching a YouTube video, which that's not, it can't be that, right? Like there has to be more to the technical support side end of it with stuff all going live, right? Or it's all scheduled to go live at a certain time. Okay, 
So if that's the case, because Jacqueline was showing the website like on her Instagram story like hours before, and she was showing like how you could go in there and buy things and codes and all this kind of stuff. So if that's the case, they did have technical access to the website on the back end long before it started, right? So then why wouldn't you have your technical support team standing right next to you? People that went to college, some of them have master's degrees that are trained in fixing these things. Why would you not have them if you were this boss babe CEO right next to them so that when this happened, they said, hold on a second, Jacqueline, and they sat down and they fixed it, right? And why is it always this, and here, I mean, these are just the questions I'm asking, right? Why is it always the same technical issues with everybody that sells from these different sites out there? I don't understand it, okay? I furthermore don't understand it when you buy from any other website out there that is not influencer related, that has a release, that is going to go viral, and they never have these issues, right? Even if they sell out, they sell out. They just say, hey, we sold out. You know, it's like, what's the, there's a, uh, a blanket brand that I want for my bed. It's called, I think, Sunday Citizen. They sell out of their blankets all the time. And they just say, we sold out within 24 hours, right? It's not like this huge issue. It's not like, oh my God, we have technical problems, blah, 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 whatever. It's like, we just sold out. Come back. We're going to get some more. It's just not that deep. But, like, major brands, like, they sell out of things. Major brands also don't have these huge technical issues the day of a launch. It's always with influencers, okay? Well, think about this for a second. The, the major marketing tool to an influencer is the fact that they are an influencer. If they weren't an influencer, if they weren't making YouTube videos, if they weren't a personality that people invested in and cared about, then nobody would be buying the products, okay? So the fact that Jaclyn Hill is Jaclyn Hill and people are invested in Jaclyn Hill and saw her uh, earrings and her necklaces that she's been wearing the last few months is her selling point, right? Like, that's what's gonna get people to buy Jaclyn Roxanne jewelry is Jaclyn Hill. So when people are concerned about Jacqueline and the fact that she's having these technical issues, even though I have to say, I think that if this is like, you've played this game one too many times and this is starting to backfire in your face. Do I think that there's some technical issues there? Yeah, but it's like, you guys, I don't understand why there wouldn't be test runs on this stuff, okay? I mean, like these are, I'm not a business owner, right? Like I'm just not a business owner, but if I were having a major launch like this, this is what I would say. I want to have, like, I want us to do a run through at two o'clock every day for the next two weeks running forward as if that's the launch time that it's going to happen. And I want to go through and I want to purchase m things on my end so I, I can see. Just like when you make a video and you list it as unlisted on your computer, right? You can send a link to other people. Other people can see it, <clears throat> but it's still private to the world. That's what I would say. I, I want to run a test run on this website so that I know that the day that it goes live, my people can get in there and get things. Because let me tell you what people are complaining about, okay? They're hitting things like one time. They're not even adding it to their cart. They're like hitting a, a, like a necklace or a ring or earrings or whatever. I don't know if she has uh, rings. I think it's just uh, necklaces and earrings. But they're like hitting things one time. And they're like being booted out of the system. And it's saying to them, you've been kicked out of the system for too many attempts, right? And I'm like, this is crazy. When you go over to Jaclyn Hill's Twitter, people are not happy, okay? People are not happy whatsoever. I think I actually copied... <clears throat> well, actually, Jaclyn Hill, she... Uh, I'm not going to throw it up here because it doesn't really matter. She... Uh, I mean, it's a pretty picture of her, but... She posted this picture on her Instagram story today, on, or on Jaclyn uh, Roxanne, and it says, today, it says, Today is the day. Get ready to shop the first ever Jaclyn Roxanne collection in one hour. Now, when you go underneath here, at first there's some very glowing comments, and then it starts in. The site is already crashing. I don't think any amount of prep could have prepared for how badly people wanted this. 20 million requests, you guys. Okay, first of all, here's two questions that I'm not buying, okay? 20 million requests on Jaclyn Hill's jewelry website at one time? I don't believe that. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't believe that. I don't even believe that Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson got those numbers. Okay. I mean, 20 million people. Jacqueline Hill, let's just see on her. Uh, I don't even know what her numbers are on. I'm getting out of my next part of my video. I don't even know what Jacqueline's numbers are on her. Um, hold on a second. On her YouTube channel. I think she has like 5 million subscribers or something, right? So Jacqueline Hill has... 
5.7 million subscribers. So four times as many subscribers Jaclyn Hill has were on her website at the same time wanting to buy her jewelry? Or was it just the rest of the universe that just happened to hear about Jacqueline's jewelry site? No, girl, I ain't buying it. I'm sorry, okay? I'm just not. This ain't my first time at the rodeo. And the second thing is that she said, we've been planning this. We've been, like, preparing for this for two months. Like, this is what gets Jacqueline Hill into trouble, okay? Is that she just pulls these numbers out of thin air. I've been working on this makeup for 10 years. This has been my dream for 17 years. We've been working on this computer technical problem for two months, right? If she was really a boss CEO, what she would say is, I am not happy about this. I do not know who is responsible for this, but I can tell you I'm going to get to the bottom of this. We sat in a meeting in September 3rd of 2020, and they assured me that the server that I was going with would work without any problems come a year and two months later. It's a year and two months later. We have test run this 52 times, and there's been a problem this just this last time. It doesn't make any sense to me, okay? But to get on video and just be like, I don't know what happened to you guys. I'm so sorry. Like, I'm so happy and embarrassed. <laughs> this happens every time, girl. Okay? Be a boss CEO. Take responsibility. Don't get in a video and say, and I know this is where people are like, you're being hard. No, I'm criticizing a business owner, okay? This is where people are like, you're bullying Jacqueline Hill. No, I'm getting online and I'm giving constructive criticism to a business CEO, okay? To a CEO that would hire somebody in and say, Give, I'm giving, him this, giving her the same advice that she would hire somebody and probably pay him $100,000 to give them very critical advice, okay? First of all, you want people to play into this sympathetic influencer because that too is marketing your things, okay? Behind the scenes, I hope that you are not running your business this sensitively because you can't, okay? Business owners cannot be this sensitive about their business. Yes, they can be in love with it. They can be emotional about it. They can be passionate about it. They can just love it with everything they do. I, I totally agree with that, okay? But to sit there the day of the launch, and it's just, to me, it's just... I don't know. I have issues with it, okay? Come out and state the facts. Not, we've been working on this for two months. When? With who? When, was, when were the technical meetings, right? Like, I think that's a fair question to ask when you're investing in somebody's business. I'm sorry. I just do, okay? So anyway, then if you go over to Jaclyn Hills, the reason why I get so frustrated with this over the Jaclyn Hill, the business launch thing, or the Jeffree Star business launch thing is, <clears throat> let me explain it to you, Okay? Because for the people that make excuses for them, for the people that are like, but you don't know how hard this is for Jacqueline. Like, this is so hard. No, 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 no. Okay? Jacqueline Hill is a business owner that is going to massively make huge amounts of money off of this jewelry that she is selling. Okay? To get in a video and be like, I'm so effing embarrassed, you guys. Okay, no. You pull it together and be a CEO in that moment. You make your customers and your audience feel as secure as you do. And say, you guys, I don't know what's going on. And I am extremely, em you can say you're embarrassed, but say, I'm embarrassed that this happened the day of my launch, but I'm even more embarrassed for the people that told me that this was together and this was ready to go because trust me, they are not going to be happy with what I have to say, but I am getting to the bottom of this and I will have an answer for you and we will fix this as soon as possible. She put out some little statement at the end of her Instagram story, the very end of it, that said, we're working with IT and they're going to have an answer for us soon. It's always that, okay? But people are still getting through and they're buying their products. You know, so I think what it is is that only so many people can be in a cart at the same time. And she should just come out and say that. Hey, listen, you guys. Okay, instead of saying we have 20 million requests at the same time, 20 requests, million requests at the same time, or 20 million requests since the, since the site went live. That I could believe. Because if you tried to get back into the site 15 or 20 times, well, that counts as 15 or 20 different requests. Take that times 5 million. Sure, that could easily be 20 million people, okay? But 20 million requests at the same time, no, I'm not buying that. What I think is happening is this, okay? Is that the server is saying you can only have 1,000 people in the cart, like, checking out of their cart at any given time. And it, it's just like if you had, if you're at Walmart and their system would overload, okay? If you're trying to check out too many people at the same time, it'd be like, nah, 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 you know, it would overload, right? So what's happening is you could only have so many people check out at the same time. And the system doesn't have a good waiting system, right? So people are getting bumped out is what's happening. Jacqueline should just come out and say that. We can't have more than a thousand people checking out at the same time. 
you know, and this is the best that we can do. I bought the largest server possible. You guys, I promise the products will be there. They're not going to sell out, okay? That would be a boss babe kind of move to make. Hey, listen, it's going to be there. And if we do sell out, I will turn around and make sure that there are more products in time for you guys to have them by the holidays. Period. End of story. Because that's what I do as a CEO is I take care of business. I don't understand. People would like be like, who is this new Jacqueline? She is in control. You know, she is, you know, okay, so... If you go over to her Twitter, she has posted on Twitter that she's very, very upset about this. And she says, hold on a second. I had this all tuned up, and now I got Jack, I got Tati stuff pulled up. Okay. My battery died while I was looking up uh, Jaclyn Hill's Twitter. So when you go over to Jaclyn Hill's Twitter, all right, she has this tweet that she put up. She said, I'm so effing sorry and embarrassed, you guys, all right? And basically what it is, is it is tons of people showing where they, like, take screenshots and they show where they were locked out of the website for things like just clicking on a necklace or a pair of ear earrings or something like that, or if they try to add it to the cart, they were, like, kicked out of the website. There are a ton of other people over there that are like, oh, Jacqueline, don't be worried, don't be embarrassed, blah, 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 this happens all the time. There's a few people over there that are comparing the crash of Jack. like, this is kind of funny to me, um, that are comparing the crash of Jacqueline Hill's website for her jewelry to Sony crashing because so many people wanted to buy their PlayStation 5. Woo! Okay, that's when we are, like, really getting to a point of, like, defending these people because we love them so much. I like Jacqueline. I've said that time and time again. Y'all know I do, okay? But Jacqueline's hoop earrings are not a Sony PSI, PS5, okay? Let's just, let's just be for real, okay? Th it makes a little bit more sense why there would be so many people on the website for a Sony PS5, okay? So it's kind of, like, that's not a, a real fair comparison. I'm just saying. Okay. But anyway, but anyway, so there, it goes back and forth. There are a lot of people over there that are supporting Jacqueline. There are a lot of people that are like really, really frustrated. And quite frankly, there are a lot of people that are like, Hey, Jacqueline, this happens with literally every single launch that you do. Okay. Like every single launch, there's always a technical issue. And, and I think that this is the other thing. If it's not like a technical issue, it's we've sold out of something. Like if you guys don't remember, this was just you know, less than a year ago, we were talking about the Valentine's Day mystery boxes, which might have been people speculated Christmas mystery boxes. We still don't know. But remember, like, there weren't enough and she sold out that quick. I mean, there's always, whenever it it's a launch with Jaclyn Hill, there's always something, okay? So, yes, God forbid, bring up the lipsticks. But I am going to bring up the lipsticks, okay? Because I think it's pertinent to this. When there was the lipstick, there was the huge issue with all the lipsticks, okay? Then there's been issues with other things, like people have said. There's been other, like, site crashings that have happened in between the lipsticks, okay? As well with previous to that, when she did collabs with other people. Then we now come to then the mystery boxes, okay? There was the whole fiasco with the mystery boxes not selling out. Or selling out, not selling out. People couldn't get mystery boxes, Okay. And then, and it was the same thing. It was like, I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm so embarrassed. I should have planned for more, blah, 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 whatever. But I'm so excited that we sold this out, okay? There was the mystery boxes. Now here we are, and it's the jewelry line, and it's the same thing. So here's the thing for me. It's like when this happens to the same person over and over and over again, like for example, right? People always, like, believe this whole, well, fans of Jeffree Star are always like, God, his site always crashes every time. Like, God, you think that Jeffree would figure it out by now? Yes, he totally has. I don't buy it. I don't believe it at all, okay? I think that Jeffree uh, Star's site crashing because there's too many people on the site is totally a marketing tool. I do not believe it at all. I think it is this thing to drive people to think I have so many people on my website right now that my website is crashing, okay? I don't believe it, period. I don't, okay? Um, and I'm starting with Jaclyn Hill to be like, girl, seriously, like, every single launch that you have, there's, like, something that something that really has gone wrong. And I have, like, really been singing Jaclyn's praises out lately and been like, I think this is a fantastic jewelry idea, and I think that she might be the businesswoman that she might be a genius, and we didn't know it. Well... She might be a, a genius idea person, okay? 
I'm not sure that I think that Jacqueline, and I'm allowed to change my opinion at any moment, okay? And based on this, I'm starting to rethink my opinion. I'm not sure that I think that Jacqueline Hill is maybe an excellent CEO. I don't know that I think she's the person that should maybe be in the front running everything. I think she's a great ideas person. I think maybe she should be like the creative director, but I don't know that I think she's a great CEO, okay? I mean, that's where you have to really kind of think through these things. And, and listen, I just wanna say this, okay? You can be a fan of somebody and still be critical of their work. You can say, Jacqueline, I am so excited about this uh, jewelry, and I am I, I love this jewelry, but to say that you have only been preparing for this for two months, when this is a huge business venture, okay, like for me, like that's not preparation enough, and I can say that, right? And there, when you read these threads, and it's all of these enabling comments, like there's nothing that you should be embarrassed about, you shouldn't be ashamed of this at all, blah, 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 blah. No, sh I'm not saying that she should be embarrassed of this, and I'm not saying that she should be ashamed of this, okay? As a CEO, what she should be is figuring out who's in charge of knowing these things because that's what a CEO does, okay? A CEO, it goes down like this, should know who is in charge of this, and IT, you better get this up and going, and there better not be one person out there, one audience member of mine, one subscriber, one person that wants an airing out there that is having difficulty with my website in an hour. You better pull it together, okay? Because I paid you a lot of money to have this site up. That's what a CEO does. That's how a CEO acts, all right? And if a CEO can't do that, then gets on a website and says, or on an Instagram story and says, I'm sorry, you guys, this was all my mistake. This was all me because I, not to act like I don't know what happened, but to say, I only planned this out and prepared for this two months in advance. And that wasn't obviously enough time. We should have been doing test launches on this six months a year in advance, you know? To me, it's poor planning as a CEO. And, and Jacqueline Hill wants to be the CEO so bad. She's in her Instagram story and she's like, I'm opening a business tomorrow and I'm so excited for her. Like, that's the thing, right? I'm so excited for her. But like, Jacqueline Hill needs somebody to say, girl, maybe it's time for you to step down and be creative director and not CEO. Because there are a lot of things that go wrong with your business when you launch all these businesses, okay? Jacqueline Hill now has major businesses that all have websites. She's got Jacqueline Cosmetics. She's got, got I'm in it. She's got the jewelry line. She's got all this stuff all launched around these websites, okay? If she's having IT problems and she's the CEO and she's only aware of the IT problems that are happening at the time of a launch and everybody out there that loves Jaclyn Hill is like, don't worry about it. You guys are enabling Jaclyn Hill to not worry about it, okay? Because then she'll say, well, nobody really cares. Nobody's that upset about it. So I just don't have to worry that hard. So in the future, don't complain about it because that's what you'll get. You'll get broken websites because you told Jaclyn Hill, don't worry about it. It's okay. You know, it's not okay. It's not okay that a business person has a broken website the day of their launch. And I mean, if there, if there were 20 million people on that website, I want to see the numbers. That's all I'm saying. All right. Now let's talk about, and Jacqueline, y'all know, you know, I love you, Jacqueline. I do. Okay. And if you want to call me up for some unsolicited free advice, I'm more than happy to tell you what I think and, and how to act as far as like this, because I do think that she has the ability to be, I don't know, maybe she doesn't believe in herself enough. Maybe that's what it is, you know, and, and I wish she were more confident to just, I think at some point, like a CEO, like all the CEOs I've worked with, they're not crying and whining in Instagram stories, okay? Like they're, they're confident, they're getting in, um, they're taking responsibility, they're taking action, they're taking ownership, right? And if they can't, they're like, hey, I'm sorry for what happened. Like, it's my responsibility at the end of the day. I run the company, and I will make it right for you guys. Like, I don't get that from Jacqueline. It's always kind of like finger pointing. I don't, I don't know, but I'm embarrassed, and this was my dream. Well, girl, this ain't six. You're not six, and you're playing house anymore, okay? You're an adult, and this is a business, and you're a CEO, and be a CEO, okay? That stands for Chief Executive Officer, okay? Be that if that's what you want to be. Otherwise, I allow somebody to, you know, be the CEO and you be the creative director. And that's okay. That's totally fine. There are a lot of people that aren't the CEO. They're the creative director. Hell, I just read the entire book, House of Gucci. You know, Tom Ford was the creative director of Gucci for years, okay? And had more decision making over the whole situation than the CEO did at times. So that's fine, you know? Who do you think, everything that you saw of Gucci was Tom Ford, right? The CEO is over here who is making decisions about websites and stores opening 
marketing and things like that, right? With the discussion with the creative director. You don't, you don't have to be that in charge of something. I don't know. It just is like, at some point, I think you have to do what's in the best interest for your business, you know? Okay, so let's talk about Tati Westbrook. So Tati Westbrook, she fed this a video out. Well, first of all, this is what happened. So she made an announcement saying that she was putting a video out on Wednesday and it was going to be this video where she was making some huge announcement. People speculated it had to do with Tati Beauty, but people were saying that it was going to be a new release. The majority of the people, I've seen several people since that are like, oh, I knew this is what it was going to be because she said such and such in the video. Well, I didn't know that that's what it was going to be when I watched her Q&A video. In fact, I had absolutely no idea. I, you know, I, I sang her praises in that video and I said that I really liked the video and I thought she was really forthright in it um, and she was super super honest and that's one of the things that I love about Tati but I didn't see this coming I really didn't um, it makes sense to me in retrospect when she said things like she was holding up her palette she was using her palette and she said this is bittersweet or something like that hell I just thought she meant it was bittersweet because she hadn't put anything out since and that was her first launch I don't know I'm not as smart with figuring out all that out you know what I'm saying so I'm sitting there and um, so I I'm watching that and I start getting sent, well, I'm not watching that at the time. I started getting sent all of these um, screenshots from the website from Tati Beauty. Here, I'll put it up here somewhere. Let me find the screenshot. Where do I have it? The receipts, Whitney, the receipts. Okay, so on her website it says Tati Beauty is now closed. Thank you for all your support and the amazing memories. You guys, this is like, I just want to keep this up here for a second. This is where people literally like, on a daily basis, people defending their favorite influencers drives me bonkers, okay? People literally said of that picture, because I posted that picture on Twitter, and I saw other people say this on other uh, threads as well. She's looking in the bag, so this is obviously, this is something new. So it's, the picture is representing Tati closing one door, and she's looking in the bag starting something new. What? That was her ad campaign for Blendafol. You guys, like, seriously, like, this whole infatuation with these people to the point where you will, like, make excuses for anything, it's like, can we leave that in 2021 and live in reality? Like, it's, it's, it's pretty unbelievable to me, right? And I have to say, like, it's one of the things that has really changed within the drama commentary uh, community over the last, it's like, you can't say anything about anybody because the second as you do, and you're critical of any beauty influencer out there, people are like, you're bullying, you're mean, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 which is so funny because like there's this one gal out there and like if I come for Shane Dawson or Jeffree Star I'm bullying right but she literally makes the exact same comments about every other influencer out there because she can't stand them right but when it comes to Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star she is like such a huge like fan and she's always like oh you're a bully no you just don't like the fact that I'm telling some truths on the person that you are the super fan of right we need to leave that in 2021 and the thing that I really don't understand about this is just think about this from the, the the term coaching okay when you're a coach of like let's say a basketball team or a soccer team right or gymnastics or dance okay and you have a kid out there let's say that you are coaching to do something and then you can see that they really have like natural talent that they're really good at what they do but they're lazy and they're not doing it do you just let them get away with it and go oh don't worry about it you don't have to come to conditioning Oh, what? You don't want to practice your dance? Don't worry about it. It's okay, sweetie. Don't worry about it. Or do you say, as a good coach, okay, as somebody that cares, as somebody that's invested in the success of that person, do you say, you have a lot of natural talent. You need to be here for conditioning every single day. Here are the practices that you need to do at home, okay? You should invest in private lessons because that would take you to the next level. Do those people that we really care about do we coach them with positive remarks of what will help them and be critical? Or are, do we just wish it all away and say, don't even worry about it. Oh, don't worry. It's okay. That's called enabling, right? And when you enable these people that you're obsessed with, they're never going to grow from that because they're only going to see the comments from the people that are obsessed or in love with them. So all, like I was talking about with Jacqueline Hill. So all these comments from people that say, you know, you're a bully and you don't care about these people and blah, blah, blah. No, I, I'm okay with all these people. I want these people to grow. You're the ones that want them all to stay in the same place. You don't want them to grow. Or you would say, I love you, but, okay, this is not okay, right? So anyway, um, but that was, that cracked me up that I saw that comment. So 
That was what um, Tati put out. And I have to say, at first, I was kind of like, I'm really surprised by this. Now, I have not followed the litigation closely between Tati and her old partner, but I do believe that this has to have a lot to do with that. I, uh, that's just my personal opinion. I do. So she put that out there. And then she put um, up on her Twitter last night. She was having a hard time. Everybody was waiting for this video because she was going to put this video out with this announcement, right? So everybody was waiting for this video. Hold on. Let me pull up her uh, Twitter. And she said uh, late last night, I'm having a hard time with this video. I'm going to try to, or she put this out yesterday afternoon. I'm going to try to finish it and still post tonight. But man, this is a tough one. Thanks for your patience. Okay. And everybody was really super supportive of her to that. And then she put uh, uploading. And then um, she posted the video 13 hours ago, which I don't even, that was like, it was like three or four o'clock in the morning. I know I was like, listen to my cozy mystery. I was Campers and Criminals by Tanya Kappas. Anyway, but I pulled over into a parking lot and I watched the uh, the Tati video. Here's, okay. Well, first of all, I just want to say, it makes me very, very sad. I'm sorry to see, uh, you know, the, the end of it where she was showing like her swatches and the release party. And she was so excited about that. You know, to see a dream come to an end makes me very sad for Tati. So, Tati, best of luck to all your future um, endeavors and ventures and and for everybody out there that is like, <clears throat> oh, Tati's closing this so she can start a new business and whatever. I really think that Tati is honest enough that if Tati's intentions were, I'm closing this because of all the little, she said in there, the reason why she closed, she's closing the business is basically because she took a major hit when the world basically closed down. And then on top of that, the litigation, right? Those are the main two reasons that she gave for closing the business down. If Tati's plan was to close down uh, Tati Beauty and turn around and reopen some other makeup brand, she would have announced it in the video. That is not her plan at this point, okay? Tati is honest person enough to just come right out and say, you guys, I'm going to turn around and make another, uh, next year I'm, I'm launching something else, so get ready. She did say in there for the, you know, she said for the time being, I'm just going to be reviewing makeup. I've always loved makeup. <clears throat> and then down the road, I'm open to whatever possibilities happen. Do I think that she will do other products down the, down the road? Sure. Do I think maybe she realized that owning her own business is a lot of work and she'd rather just collab with other places? Sure. It was interesting to me, in her last video, she said something to the effect of she would even maybe at some time venture to work with like another company on helping them come up with like colors and things like that. And I thought that was interesting because I thought, well, that's really a sellable talent that you have. You own your own makeup brand. Okay. You're a YouTuber that reviews makeup. You've been doing it for over nine years. Like she would be a huge asset working for a makeup company coming up, you know, with color palettes and things like that. And I thought that was interesting. But what it also told me was that Tati is really keeping her options open as far as where she's gonna go moving forward. I don't even know that I think that Tati knows, in all honesty. I just think that Tati knows I'm closing this store. It's time to close the store. And I wish her all the best for that. So I saw a lot of people online being like, oh, I'm so sad, this makes me so sad, blah, blah, blah. And, and all honesty, like it made me sad too, you know? I mean, I remember when Tati launches and this was her dream and she was super excited about it and all that kind of stuff. That being said, Tati doesn't seem super upset about it. She seems excited for the future. She seems like, okay, the one door closes, another one opens. Um, this is obviously something that Tati has prepared herself for a while. You know, I'm really hoping to some degree it allows her to move past this litigation. I mean, I'm sure she's still in the litigation. Obviously she is. But allowed her allows her to... It's one thing I would think, I, I have to just guess, when you're in litigation over this business that was your baby, that you're still in, and and then distancing yourself from it, right? Like emotionally, I have to think that for Tati, that would be a super healthy, healthy move, right? To say, well, it's not my baby anymore because it doesn't exist. And, and now I'm on to other things and you're not part of that and you don't own that, right? So the litigation, even though it was still personal, it wouldn't feel like she was protecting this baby anymore because she had let go of that. I don't know. I, I wish her all the best. I hope that, you know, Tati does well in her future endeavors. I actually put it up on Twitter last night and I wanted to kind of see what people said about it over here. Let's read and see. Um, there's a, actually, this comment is getting, I've got 176,000 likes. People are saying um, that they feel really bad. Hold on a second. Let me read you the comments. Um, so I put the sign, the little thing up and I said, what? And somebody said, 
God, it makes me so sad how everything went down with her. Um, she was my absolute favorite. She really got me into makeup and I wouldn't even buy a product unless she reviewed it. Her palette is one of my favorites of all time. It's depressing. The drama is not effing worth it. 285 likes on my Twitter, which that's a lot of likes for my Twitter. And then here is kind of like an opposing response to it. So I guess this is two sides of thinking about it. Someone said she made millions of dollars and had a lifelong or long lifespan on YouTube as a beauty guru. Stop feeling sorry for these LA millionaires. They make enough money. They can start over and find something to make them happy. And someone said, it's not feeling sorry for millionaires. It's an end of something a lot of people enjoyed. And I do agree with that. And someone said, I feel sorry for me. <laughs> LOL, I love her palette and I don't want it to run out now that I don't have a backup. That's what my friend Tanya Jean said. I told her, I said, Tanya, I can't believe that Tati is closing up shop. And she goes, so I'm not going to get another palette. <laughs> I said, Tanya. She goes, but that's my favorite palette of life. I was just talking about it when I did my video the other day. And I do think that that's how a lot of people feel, you know, is that like, oh my God, like I've had so many women tell me in comment sections and just, you know, reach out to me and be like, Tati's palette is the end all palette of the world. They love it. You know, anyway, Tati, best of wishes or best of luck to you and, um, happy trails. And, um, yeah, I mean, Tati's still got a, a great, successful future ahead of her, you know? And um, so anyway, like Jacqueline, I'm sure she'll rise from the ashes. Anyway, let me know what you think about all that in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.